This is the Linear Algebra Lectures video series. You can find more information about this video as well as a link to the written textbook in the description below. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about this video series and the associated teaching and learning tools I've created for it. Lecture 8, Span. Our objectives for this lecture are to understand the definition of the span of a set of vectors. Given a set of vectors and a vector b, determine whether b is in the span of those vectors and given a set of vectors, determine whether those vectors are a spanning set for Rn. Here's the definition of span. If we have a collection of vectors in Rn, and again, let's understand the notation here, the variable p is telling us how many vectors we have, and the variable n tells us how many entries those vectors have. We can construct the span of those set of vectors, which we write by writing the word span, and then the set of vectors itself. And that represents the set of all possible linear combinations of v1, v2, up through vp. Remember the definition of linear combination from the previous lecture. This means that the elements of span of v1 through vp are all of the vectors that have the form c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2 plus 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 and so on plus cp times vp, where the c's are scalars. As we look at that definition, notice that the span is in general going to be an infinite set. There's infinitely many choices for each of those scalars in our linear combinations even though the set of vectors itself, the v1 through vp, that's a finite set. So by constructing the span, we take our finite set of vectors and produce an infinite set of vectors. Let's work through an example. If we're given two vectors, u and v, let's see if we can construct three examples of elements of span of uv. What this is asking us to do is to construct a linear combination of u and v. This means that we need to choose two scalars, a scalar for u and a scalar for v. We could, for example, choose 2 as our scalar for u and negative 4 as our scalar for v. That gives us the linear combination 2u minus 4v, which we can compute here is the vector 18, negative 10, negative 12. If we're a little bit more creative, we could choose the scalar square root of 3 for u and 0 for v. That gives us the vector 5 radical 3, negative 3 radical 3, 0. And as we saw in the previous lecture, we are allowed to choose 0 for both of our scalars, and that gives us the 0 vector which is also an element of the span of the set containing u and v. Let's look at this example. Here we have three vectors, v1, v2, and v3, and a vector b, and we're asked two different questions that look very similar, but are actually quite different. For the first question, it's simply asking us whether b is in the set containing v1, v2, and v3. Notice that the word span is missing from that question. So that's just asking us whether b is one of those three vectors. That set contains only three vectors, and if we look at it, we see that b is not one of those vectors. So that tells us that the answer is no, b is not in the set containing v1, v2, and v3. How does the question change when we add the word span? Well, this is asking us whether b is a linear combination of v1, v2, and v3. This is a question that we learned how to answer in the previous lecture. In lecture 7, we learned how to rewrite this as another equivalent question, which is to look at the vector equation x1, v1, plus x2, v2, plus x3, v3 equals b, and ask whether that vector equation is consistent. For that, we set up and row reduce an augmented matrix, and then we look in the last column of that augmented matrix and see if there's a pivot there. In this case, we see that there's not a pivot in the last column, so our equation is consistent. And as we learned in the previous lecture, the final step is to go back and answer the original question, which is to say here that yes, b is in the span of the set containing v1, v2, and v3. So this gives us several different ways to think about what the span is. The definition is that the span of the set containing v1 through vp is the set of all linear combinations of those v vectors, but that's the same as saying that the span is the set of all vectors that have the form c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus 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 cp vp. It's also the set of all vectors b for which that vector equation x1 v1 plus x2 v2 plus 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 xp vp equals b has a solution, and that's the same as saying that it's the set of all vectors b for which that vector equation is consistent. So given a set of vectors v1 through vp, you may be asked whether another vector b is in the span of the v's. So here's your outline for solving that kind of question. You first set up the vector equation that you see here. You row reduce the corresponding augmented matrix. You use that row reduced matrix to determine whether that equation is consistent or inconsistent by looking for a pivot in the final column. If the equation is consistent, then yes, the vector b is in the span of the v's. And if that equation is inconsistent, then no, b is not in the span of the v's. To help us better understand the notion of span, let's consider some small cases. 
Remember that we're using the variable p to represent the number of vectors. So let's look at the cases where p equals 1, where we only have one vector, and p equals 2, where we only have two vectors. If we only have one vector, then we're looking at the span of the set containing v1, and so the linear combination is simply just a scalar multiple of v1. So the vectors in the span of the set containing v1 just look like c1 v1 for some real number c1. And there's two cases we need to consider. If that vector v1 is the zero vector, then no matter what scalar we multiply by that zero vector, the result will be the zero vector. In this case, that means that the span of the set containing v1 only has one vector in it, and that vector is the zero vector. And this is actually the only case where the span does not turn out to be an infinite set. Every other case, the span will be an infinite set. And so if v1 is any vector other than the zero vector, then we can visualize the span of that set containing v1 as a line through the origin. Let's take a look at an example to visualize that. So here we are in R2, and we have the single vector v, which is the vector 1, 2. Let's first draw several elements of the span of the set containing v on this grid. Here I've drawn 0v, 1v, negative 1v, and 2v, and what you should notice here is that all of these vectors lie on a single line that goes through the origin. All right, now how do things change if we have two vectors? Now we have the span of the set containing v1 and v2, so again, that's the set of all linear combinations of v1 and v2, so those are all the vectors that look like c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2, where c1 and c2 are scalars. If either of those vectors is the zero vector, then essentially we're back to the one vector case, and so we can go back and look at our analysis for that case. This is also true if one of those vectors is a multiple of the other. So what do we get when we form the span of the set of two vectors, where neither one of those vectors is the zero vector, and neither vector is a multiple of the other? Well, in R3, what we get is a plane. So in this case, we can visualize the span of the set containing v1 and v2 as a plane through the origin. And remember that this only works when neither vector is the zero vector, and neither vector is a multiple of the other. Things can be hard to visualize either when we have more than two vectors or when we're in Rn, where n is more than three. It's hard to visualize in higher dimensions, and it's harder to visualize exactly what's going on when we have more than two vectors. But hopefully these couple of examples, these small cases, give you an idea of what's going on. Now let's ask a different question. Earlier, we asked whether a specific vector was in the span of a set of vectors. But sometimes, depending on the v's, the answer to that question is always yes, no matter what vector b we pick. Consider this example. Here we have two vectors, u and v, so u is the vector 1, 2, and v is the vector minus 1, 1. Let's try to figure out why every vector, b1, b2, where we don't know what those b's are, those are unknown constants, let's show that that vector is in span of u, v, no matter what b is. Well, as we saw before, we need to think of the equivalent question, which is whether the equation x1, u plus x2, v equals b is consistent, and again, we want to do this for every b, where we don't know what those b constants are. As before, we set up an augmented matrix, and now we need to row reduce this matrix. But this time, our matrix has variables in it, so unfortunately we can't use our calculator or technology to row reduce this, we're going to have to row reduce it by hand. The good news is that it only takes one row reduction step to get this into echelon form. Even though we don't know what those b constants are, we can still see where our pivots are, and we can still see that our third column, our augmented column here, does not have a pivot in it. And that means that this equation is consistent, which means that b is, in fact, in the span of the set containing u and v. In this case, we say that the set containing u and v spans R2, which is just another way of saying that every vector in R2 can be written as a linear combination of u and v. We say that the v's form a spanning set for Rn if every vector in Rn is in the span of that set of vectors. We also say that the set spans Rn. So going back to example four, Look at this animation. This animation shows a variety of linear combinations of u and v, and what you can see is as we change the weights in that linear combination, we can construct any vector in R2 as a linear combination of u and v. And that's just another way of saying that this set containing u and v spans R2, or that the set containing u and v is a spanning set for R2. So we have two uses of the word span now. We have span as a noun, the thing that we get when we construct the span of that set of vectors, which is the set of all possible linear combinations of those vectors. And we also have a span as a verb, that these vectors are doing something, that when we construct the span of that set of vectors, what we get is everything, every possible vector in Rn. So now we have a new question. If we have a set of vectors in Rn, we might ask, is that set a spanning set for Rn? Do those vectors span Rn?
So this is the same as asking whether every vector in Rn can be written as a linear combination of the v's, whether the vector equation x1 v1 plus x2 v2 plus 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 xp vp equals b has a solution no matter what b is, or whether that equation is consistent no matter what b is. And for right now, we don't really have a good way of answering this question. For right now, what we would have to do is set up an augmented matrix where the final column has variables in it, and then row reduce it by hand, and then look for pivots. We're going to learn a better way to do this in a future lecture. But for right now, it's important to distinguish the two different kinds of questions that we've talked about in this lecture. The questions on the left, I'll talk about a specific vector b, and whether that specific vector is in the span of a set of vectors. And the questions on the right talk about whether that set of vectors is a spanning set for Rn. Notice that there's no specific vector b there. We're talking about every vector b being a linear combination of the v's. If you look in the description below, I've got a supplemental video where I go through answering more examples of these kinds of questions. Thanks for watching this video lecture. You can find links to the other videos in this series and to the written textbook in the description below. If you're an instructor, you can contact me for more information about the over 300 online linear algebra homework problems that I've created for the free MyOpenMath platform.